All right, so today we're gonna to be installing Mac OS through a script on Proxmox, so let's get started. Now, I personally run macOS in my environment just so I could run the software called Blue Bubble Server, which allows me to forward my iMessaging to my Android device. This way, I technically have iMessaging. With that being said, otherwise, I don't really use it for anything else. Since I don't have a graphic card passed through to it, it's pretty much useless otherwise running it as a server. So today, we're going to be using the script called OSX Proxmox from Gabriel. He did a really good job at getting this going. So I like the fact that Proxmox, you could just run scripts and install VMs or containers. And this is one of the ways that he's doing it. It also makes it super easy so you don't have to run through all the hoops that I had to when I was installing Mac OS on my end. It does basically everything for you, creating the config files, downloading the ISO, uh, downloading open core, sets everything up for you so you can just basically run the script and have Mac OS installed. So I'm gonna run through this entire setup for you. All right, so in our environment, I do have two environments right here. This is my uh, newer of the two with the MSO1 mini forums. And I do have a video about this server right over here. Now what we need to do is head over to shell and jump over to our GitHub. And there is a little command right over here that you could just copy and paste. And this will actually start the installation process. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it right into here. And this will set up the environment so it adds all the stuff that you need to get at Mac OS working. Now you might already have a lot of these parameters set up like IOMMU and stuff like that. It's just redoing it just to make sure you have it available. Now this doesn't take long, give it about like a minute or two and it'll run through all the setups, but it does require you to reboot the entire system. Now, because I have all that stuff set up once before, I don't have to go through it again. But if this is your first time, it will ask you to reboot your entire server. I am gonna quit this and clear the screen. Imagine I did reboot the server and to get back into the setup menu, I would have to type OSX setup and it'll bring me back into that same setup menu. Now from here, we could just choose what we want. So we can have other options over here. You can enable iCloud, uh, remove Proxmox subscription, customize open core, stuff like that. But in my case, I'm just gonna simply do install Ventura. Now I tried to install a, this later version, which is 14 and it's a hit or miss. I was able to install it on this environment over here on my mini PVE, but on this newer environment, I was running into issues. So I know Ventura works. So on the, for the sake of this video, I am just gonna run Ventura. To continue, I'm gonna hit option number six and it will ask you what VM ID you wanna do. I am gonna do 107 and VM name. I'm just gonna leave it as hack Ventura and enter disk size. 64 gigs is enough, but if you're planning to run Xcode or any other stuff on here, you might wanna increase this to like 128 or maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna leave this at 64 for now. And your storage. Now, if you have multiple storages, you could choose different ones. In my case, since I only have one, which is local LVM, I am gonna keep that as default. And how many cores? I'm gonna choose four cores. And how many RAM? Now, default is gonna be four gigs of RAM. I run this on four gigs of RAM mostly, but for the sake of this video, I am gonna run this on eight gigs of RAM, so it's a little bit faster. Now, do you also wanna download and create a recovery image? I am gonna hit yes on this. You could say no, so it saves you a little bit of space, but I am gonna hit yes, and it's gonna download everything else for you. Now, once that is done, since I do have all the ISOs downloaded, that's why it was quick, uh, it does create this VM for me, and now I could just hit start on that VM, and from here on, I just have to follow the list. Now, there's two options right here. We are gonna run the first one, which is Ventura, and this is booting through open core itself. Give this about, I think the total installation of the Mac OS took me about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes or so. So it's not really a process to rush. So definitely keep an eye on it. We do have to do a few things so you can't just let it go. So here we are, we first booted up in here. We're gonna use disk utility. We're gonna continue. We are gonna format that 64 gigabyte drive right over here and we're just gonna hit erase. In my case, I'm gonna call this Mac OS, and I'm gonna leave this as APFS. Yes, I'm gonna erase this, and we are done. Now we're gonna close out of this and go into reinstall Mac OS Ventura. Continue, continue, and I agree. Oh, actually, I agree. I do have to scroll down that. Now we're gonna choose that Mac OS partition that we just created. Hit continue. 
And it says two hours and 17 minutes. Don't worry about this. It will speed up. It's about like 10 minutes, I could say, for this whole process. And it will reboot the system. All right, so here we go. This is the first of several reboots. You see there's more options here. Now, the first one you want to go into is actually not Ventura. It's actually Mac OS installer because that will continue installing your operating system. So I'm going to hit this. It's going to load back in here. It's going to do its thing. And then it's going to try to reboot one more time, I believe, before we have to actually go into the setup menu. So you can see... Right now, that's about 29 minutes remaining. Again, this is like about five, maybe 10 minutes, depending on how many CPUs you allocated to it. But once this is done, it's gonna reboot one more time. You go back into the installer and then it should be the last time everything is completed before you go in and log in and you know do all your uh, accounts and stuff. All right, I believe this is the third time and you can still see that there are more options here. So here we go. We're gonna go back into the Mac OS installer. And again, this should take maybe five minutes. I, I don't even have this time. I just let this go. All right, there we go. And that was the last time. And you can still see that now we have a new option called Mac OS and it doesn't say installer anymore. That's because everything is all set up by now and you should be able to just boot right into the operating system itself. Now, eventually you can go into open core, modify some settings and erase all the other prompts. This way it will automatically boot into macOS, but I'm not going to be covering any of that. But this should bring you right into the installer where you log in for the first time, make your username, password, stuff like that. But it, this script makes it so easy to get macOS installed right into your Proxmox. And again, I'm using 8.1.4, which the latest version of Proxmox right now, I think is 8.1.7. And here we go. This is the main setup of um, Mac OS. And you can just go through all the stuff like United States over here, and then continue on the prompts, create your usernames, so forth and so forth. So if you are familiar with this, so I'm gonna go through these settings and then show you the desktop. All right, so here we are. This is Ventura running on Proxmox. And as you can see, it is running. And if I pull up some stats about this Mac, you can see it's iMac Pro, three gigahertz. It's running on the emulated display, so it doesn't have a graphic card on here, so it is gonna run very slow. It is using eight gigs of RAM like we uh, allocated, and it's on Ventura 13.6.6. And if I hit more info, here's the information that you can see. This is the new settings menu. If you're not familiar with this compared to the old one, it's like a little tab sliding thing. But yeah, it is working. Now, a lot of things don't work, especially because you don't have graphic acceleration. So if I was to try to play a video off YouTube, it will actually be extremely slow, almost crashing the VM if you wanted to uh, test this out. But say like my latest video would be the Netboot video. It would pretend to load and it do its thing. You see how slow it is? And my mouse doesn't even follow along anymore because it's so slow. And if I keep this going, it's gonna crash the computer. It's just, it doesn't have any uh, graphic acceleration, so it won't run a lot of this stuff. But again, I use Mac OS just to run blue bubbles. So technically I'm running Mac OS to be my little server so I could get iMessaging working on Android. But otherwise, uh, yeah, it is working. If you do want to play around with it, terminal, it does work. Uh, if you want to get Xcode working, it should work on here. I haven't tried it yet, but App Store does work if you get signed in. And a few other things, like I said, there's a technique behind it to get iMessaging working. You do have to have an account that's already approved. So it's not like you can create a brand new account right now and have it working. You do need an older account that's been working with iMessage, Apple and stuff like that. And then it should work as soon as you sign in. Otherwise, there we have it, Mac OS for Proxmox running through a script and if you guys have any questions about this hit me up down in the comments below And if you guys are new to the channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon So, you know when the next video is gonna be out and thanks for watching